Yeah, so actually these, uh, I've got two games that actually were played on chess.com. Um, so these actually were from, there was a big tournament, uh, the Daily Chess Championship. It had like 7,500 people um, or something. I actually came in second place. Um, so, so two of these games are probably two of the most fun or, or most interesting games uh, that I played. Uh, so I have one from the white side and one from the black side. Any preference on what you'd like to see? One's a Sicilian, the other one's a, a, a Tarish or semi Tarish. Oh, All right. Yeah. All right. So Tarish is like I. He played boring. I I had yeah. This is this is the furthest from boring you're going to see. These games are are straight fireworks. So so this should be pretty fun. Um, so what's kind of cool? So I'm not going to comment too much about the opening. It's a it's a Tarish. I don't know the theory on this opening all that well. Uh, it's nice in correspondence uh, tournaments like this that you actually get to look up opening books uh, because I actually get out of the opening in most of my games is where, is where I lose most of my games. Uh, so we get into this fairly typical kind of position, like Black decides that uh, instead of keeping the tension in the center that they're going to close it down with C4. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of these kinds of moves. I always try to teach people uh, to maintain the tension in the center. Like I commented that you did a good job about uh, on this the other day. Um, when you take the tension away, now all of a sudden the plans become very clear in a position like this. So what side is black going to try and play on after the move C4? Yeah, he has to go for the queen side, right? Because the pawns... Are pointing towards the queen side, so so he's going to try and expand what with. The bishop well, the queen? so well, this guy he's I mean so he's what he's going to try to do is maneuver all of his pieces to the queen. So he's going to play like, you know, b five, maybe a six. The queen will come out over here. He's going to try and create some some problems over here, which means that White wants to play on the king side, which is a little weird because I have my bishop sitting here on g two, but you'll see that that. Uh, sometimes these bishops that are sitting on g2 that look like they're aiming towards the queen side yeah. can quickly pivot to the king side. Uh, and, and it happens, it, 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 or at least helps support my plans on the king side, like happens in this game. So I wasn't a huge fan of c4, but it is theory. And knight e5 here is, is theory, bishop f5. And here is actually where I diverge from, from what's most common. Uh, here, the typical move is just knight takes on c6, and white can claim a, a structural advantage. Uh, but I didn't really like to give them the ability to, to fortify d5 all that much, and, and uh, I wasn't sure if this guy was also following all the same uh, you know, opening database that I was using, and so I decided that I was going to play a, a little bit more offbeat game um, with f3. So clearly, the idea of f3 is I'm going to play e4 and just try and build a monstrous center. And when I do this, if I can get rid of the d5 pawn, then the c4 pawn actually becomes weak as well. And you'll see all of my pieces should come to life. Um, it's, it's not the most common move here, but uh, it, it kind of worked out well. So, you know, he develops pieces here. Rook c8 is good. It actually supports that, uh, that c4 pawn. And we can immediately go for our e4 strike. We have, you know, three pieces defending e4, so why not? And he goes for bishop e6, so, which, is, which is the right move. Can you tell me why you wouldn't want to take with, uh, with the pawn? What's, what's, what's so bad about taking d takes e4? What do you think I would do here? Could take on c4. You could take back and then take on c4. Yeah, I mean, it's, so it's actually it's a, it's more positional, right? So after I take here, he can't go bishop e6 because d5 just wins a piece. So you'd have to do something like bishop d7, and then I have I can take on c6, and now he has the pleasant choice behind between giving himself like really crappy double pawns, or giving me this monstrous center. I mean, the, you know, White's practically already won here. Uh, I don't. I don't think Black could play like this. So, so he played the right move by uh, by just playing Bishop e6. 
And now, um, Black actually has a threat here. Do you spot, like, Black... Black actually... It, it's really funny. Like, it looks like I've accomplished my plan. I pushed E4. He just retreated. But by this retreat, Black has something really nasty in this position that he said... And it was the point behind Rook C8. I almost, like, played this move, like, really quickly and then realized how bad it was going to... Like, I was just going to play Rook C1. So what happens when I play Rook C1? Mm. So when trying to solve for these kind of things, just look for funny tactical tricks that can happen to the position, right? And when you move your F-pawn, you usually you open up lines against your king. Is there any way that he could take advantage of the fact that my, that my F-pawn is, is gone? Or, or it's moved? Oh, yeah. Take yeah, so if I go Rook C1, then hello... He just goes knight takes d4. And if queen takes, why is it single click not working? Then we have this, and I can I can uh, throw my phone through through the window. Um, so luckily, I, I wasn't so dumb, and I just played bishop e3. Uh, and now he, I mean, I didn't understand this whatsoever, uh, but he plays the move knight to b8. He apparently wants to reroute this knight Somewhere, I, I really can't tell you. A6, D, or D7, maybe just to challenge him. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't. I, I don't see a real plan He's behind to it. Avoid doubling the pawn. Well, he can always take back with the rook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I guess it didn't. I, it still doesn't make too much sense to me. I, I don't think it's a very good move, but um, you know. So I just I play queen e2. I'm trying to connect my rooks, and you know, it seems like a decent square for the queen. And now he goes for for this plan, like I outlined before. He's going to try and expand on the queen side with a6, maybe b5, queen a5, and so forth. So now I'm not going to voluntarily let this happen. Uh, so I'll at least put up some resistance. Now queen a5. And queen a5 in these types of positions is actually a, a really flexible move. Because he might... In, so it does support b5 in, in some cases. He might actually sneak it to b4 and maybe create some pressure... Uh, but he also, it, it has like this sideways kind of pressure. So he might take on e4 someday, and the queen might be able to jump to the, the king's side laterally, which is, uh, which is a cool cool technique in a lot of the king's Indian defenses and things like that. But, uh, you know, so, so queen a5 made a lot of sense here. So I, I felt that it was time for white to attack. Now... Every pawn move, right? It can't be undone. It might. It looks. It's really. It looks like a really aggressive good move. Like you just might play this without thinking, and I. I probably did, uh, but it does weaken things a little bit too, right? So what did it weaken? G4. We can G4, but it also. Oh, but and, luckily, I have this knight. But and E4. E4, right? So he immediately takes back, takes on E4. So I'm not going to get this monstrous center that that I would be hoping for. Um, but I had seen this. So here is a really cool. The, the probably the really cool part of the lesson. What is White's next move? Well, he just took a pawn. Yeah. Now, I mean, bishop d2, sure, it looks like I might get a discovery on the queen, but, I mean, one, he could just move his queen away. Um, but it's, it's probably not going to accomplish much. What do you think? Uh, knight x. Yeah, so knight takes e4 is a, is a pretty, pretty normal move. Uh, we, um, and then he could probably take knight takes back, and then I can go bishop, bishop takes on e4. And maybe he plays f5 or something. I, f5 might be a little much, but um, but yeah, we could we could I could recapture and just play pretty normal solid chess here. But if any if you guys have ever played me before, and Matt has, Matt has played now, we've been doing a little mini match on chess.com. He knows that I will n I never play like the straight way or the passive way. I always like to cause trouble. F5, baby. Yeah, so there's so some fun ways that white can create an attack out of nowhere, nowhere here. And if you've actually ever 
watched any Kasparov lectures or, or seen any of his games, material doesn't matter all that much to him. What he is all about is, and I've said this in my previous lectures, you know, I know we've had a long, a long time off, but um, you kind of try to draw a line down the middle of the board, and if you have more pieces around your opponent's king than he has defenders, then you, you should be able to create a big attack. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to play f5, a temporary pawn sack, because now he can play bishop d5 defending that pawn. I'm not getting that pawn back immediately. But what I'm going to try to do is drive away all of his pieces from his king and kill him. Right? I mean, this is that easy. So, we've played f5. We've forced him to defend his pawn. What's our next move? What, what, is, my, what is the idea behind f5? Finish the pawn storm? Pawn storms, yes. Let's go. And this already looked pretty dangerous. So how would you react as black here? Would you play h6? Tempting, but shouldn't move a pawn in front of your king unless you have to. Yeah, is h6 really going to slow me down? No. Probably not, because I'm going to play h4, anyway. right? So, and I could play g5 anyway. Play g5 anyway. Um, so it's probably not going to do much to slow me down. So, and he was he's good enough to to realize that this guy this was in the finals and uh, he was pretty decent. So he played a, a move that you typically find in the Sicilian uh, as black and like a lot of knight orf positions and uh, this doesn't resemble a knight orf at all but normally when white has these kind of pawn storms you try to move the piece like proactively away from being attacked so maybe he can respond he, his idea is he might want to respond with f6 and slow me down there that pawn is probably okay to move there's a lot of defense behind it and he could turtle up <laughs> At maybe at some point but um, you know this is a pretty typical move I he probably played it without calculating anything and I played my next move without calculating anything well I calculated something I had an, a, a vague idea of ridiculousness uh, and so that's why I went for my speculative move but it turns out here that white can win on the spot well w through like a long line and uh, it actually is with the most basic. I won't even ask you to find it. This is this was crazy. The first move is just knight takes d7, which I was like, okay. I, I when I was analyzing this game after with a computer, like I didn't get it. I was like, why is the engine saying that this is just winning immediately? Uh, and they take back. So you ever hear of like some uh, when people talk about the hardest moves in chess to see? They're always like backwards moves. Right, backwards moves are hard, and like you know, especially knight, you know, knights coming backwards or rooks coming backwards. I think there's a second class of moves that are hard to see, and they're they're horizontal pinning moves. They're really hard to see um, because I did I it like wasn't even on my radar that the bishop on d5 is extremely weak, and I didn't see it at all. With that huge hint, find white's next move. Still not easy, right? <laughs> I had the engine showing me, and I still didn't get it. Well, you, you can win a pawn by taking an e flat. Well, I get my pawn back. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think, little guy? Okay, so we could take on d5, but then he takes back with the queen, right? So knight takes here. Do you have a follow-up? Uh, so I don't, I don't see a follow-up. Or you move uh, the bishop on e3, so now you've got three pieces on e4. Can I, can I put any more pressure on this bishop on, on d5? It's a really cool tactic. Like, I mean, this is such a weird move to see. Mm -hmm. F6, then F6. F6 and rook F5. This is incredible. So oh. F6. So if they take back, say, with the knight, we drive it away with G5 because he was defending D5. So he's got to come back. Rook F5. Right? Really cool. So he, he can defend it. But then we can 
again take on e4 and take advantage of this sideways pin. Like, this is such a weird uh, thing to see. Like, if this were actually vertical, I probably would have spotted this without even, uh, without any hesitation. I probably just would have blitzed it out. But horizontal is, like, a really weird pin to see why you have to, like, create clearances, like, sacrifice a pawn to get this horizontal pin. So uh, this didn't happen in the game, but I would argue what I did uh, is way more fun. Uh, it, you'll see it becomes wild. So I play this really strange looking move, rook f4. What on earth is Rob thinking about with rook h4? Or oh, rook f4. What am I thinking about? Well, knight takes bishop. If the queen takes, then bishop takes. Then... Yeah, so I am, I'm, I'm putting some pressure. You can, you can get another pawn. Exactly, so I am putting some pressure on e4. I, I might be preparing taken on d5 and taken bishop takes uh, on e4 at some point if, uh, and, and that I, that kind of does happen. Um, what else might I be thinking about? Well, you said rook h4. Yeah, rook h4. <laughs> yeah, it was it was one of these sub uh, <laughs> subliminal, the Freudian slip kind of thing. My idea is I want to put a rook on h4, which looks absolutely stupid right now because he's got a bishop on it, and you know. And my rook can't even move anywhere over here. I have to, like, sack a pawn to make this happen. It looks absolutely stupid, right? But what I actually realized in this position was that black, black is really tied up. And there's only one resource for them to really defend this position. So do you guys see the one move that they actually have? Like, what is the one move that black would love to play right now and just to solidify the position? And make sure I have no more attacks coming on the king's side. F6. F6. Is that what you're going to say? So they want to play pawn F6. Um, so he doesn't yet. Yeah, first he plays this strange knight B6 move. For whatever reason. Trapping his own queen, by the way. Um, he thought this is a good idea. So I take on E4. Just, you know get my pawn back, I guess. But I did this knowing that his next move 100% was going to be f6. And this is the move that I saw when I played um, rook f4, and I got so excited by this that, I, that it had to be played. So he's attacking my knight. My rook is stupid. Um, bishop d2, uh, and then he can play bishop b4. Right? So, yeah, so, so the bishop is there. Uh, so it's not trapped yet. So, okay. So, I mean, so what do you do? You just played f6. My knight is really stupid on e5. My rook is really stupid on f4. Yet I'm sitting here telling you I'm going to checkmate this guy. This seems absolutely ridiculous. So if you're crazy like me, what kind of moves are on your radar? So give me some candidate moves. How do we not lose? And then how do we win? What do you think? No, no, it, no trust me, idea. when you see my move, you're going to be like, okay, my idea wasn't that bad. Rob is crazy. Uh, bishop d2. All right, so, bishop, so that was his suggestion. So, so bishop d2, um, and I hope you guys didn't just see the answer, uh, he can just play bishop b4, yeah. right? It, luckily, he has this, or else his queen would be trapped, and that would be a great yeah. move. Yeah. Um, so good idea. I like, that, I like that you actually switched from looking on the king's side the whole time to trying to win on the queen side. Because sometimes those are the things that people miss really quick. Yeah. Like, you're, you're attacking, you're attacking, you're attacking, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, by the way, you're going to lose a rook over there. Sorry. Well, you can put the knight back on uh, c3, which... Uh, on, on f3, just drop it back? Or yeah, and then... F3 or c3, no. I was thinking... Uh, oh, play like knight c3? Bishop, but just yeah, that, well, then he, just takes my, then he just takes my knight. My knight is hanging. And when, it, when he takes it, my rook is also then hanging. Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, Did you see the answer? Well, there's this thing that, like, I don't think it's the answer, but... Uh, over to g6, and then... Okay, so it turns out, so, there, so there's actually, there's two, there's two moves in this, in this position. That move is the computer move, which I didn't see at all, and it's absolutely ridiculous. So I'll show you the first move. So the, so the computer move is knight g6. 
the first one I thought. Of. Yeah, of course, because this is just a natural move that you look at, right? Because uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. So, he, so, so takes, takes, and what the heck is the idea here? Well, you get your G5 and then queen h5. Yeah, or, or queen f2 in here. Yeah. But we actually get to go and play uh, a move that you guys have been looking at. So let's say he just chops off on, on e4. I'm going to take with the rook. And we'll go here. And now I just play g5. And we're going to win. Uh, there's actually some line where I just drop back and play bishop d2 and he loses his queen. Uh, but unimportant. I don't think like a computer. Um, I'd play way more fun than computers do. So the move I came up with was obviously the natural pawn to g5. <laughs> natural. Yeah. Same idea. You're going to end up with a pawn on g6. So, so do you oh, guys see? The rook can come over ah. To so you see, you see, so you see the idea here. When I played rook f4, this is the move I saw. When I and th what's cool about correspondence chess is you can actually at home move the pieces. So I don't think I would have ever come up with this over the board here, game 60, have to like, you know, calculate. Here I can move pieces and just go, g5 looks kind of funny. Does g5, oh, I'm like, whoa, I actually can't really find too many defenses for him. So he actually plays a pretty good move. He, he takes on e4, which removes the defender of g5. And so I can, I can take back. So doesn't... Actually, we, we can pause here. Can he take on g5? Okay, so what happens if he takes on g5? What do you do as white? So you can, you can try rook g4, um, and then he might just play h6, maybe? Or you just play queen h5. We could try queen h5, and then he, maybe he'll take a rook. Am I am I mating him? Maybe. F6 after that. Well, yeah. If if he actually if you go queen h5, I might just play rook f6 or bishop f6. Might even be better. Just like really make sure that that the white bishops aren't coming to life. So let me ask you this question: What's worth more, a rook or a king? <laughs> Game ends in checkmate, right? F6. And I, and I think my comment here was, oh, lordy. <laughs> um, I will just straight up give you this rook if you'd like it. So what's the next move? Oh, yeah. We come here. And... If he goes um, h6, then we can just play queen g6 and really get up in there. Um, if he goes g6, we just take and hello. Right, so so there's no taking the rook, and it turns out that it means there's no taking that pawn, because you're just getting checkmated. If you, if you take the knight, right, so this is a I, same idea. Uh, you're you're going to get checkmated. So, which I thought was just really cool. So he finds this this move knight d5, um, which I I did actually consider, oddly enough. Um, so okay, how do we continue? What's what what was my idea the entire time about putting my rook on that stupid f4 square? Rook h4. So this is now, I mean, this attack is just cr unstoppable. So he'll, he'll take on g5. Uh, so here's a problem question. Uh, I saw this, but then like hesitated. I don't know why, but white to move and win. Matt Phelps. Rook h7, Rook h7 wins. Oh, yeah. yeah, because if, if takes f6 check again, and now f7 check to closes the door. And now we come here. And this will be checkmate. It's a pretty unbelievable kind of strike. Um, but instead, I played f6. 
I, I mixed up the move orders mm. because now he actually can defend uh, h7. I thought here for a second that I had bishop h7, then knight takes and queen h5, um, and I forgot what why this doesn't work. But he just oh, he just rook. takes the rook. Yeah. yeah. So this is what happens when you outthink yourself. I thought in this position that I could get clever, and I take and I go ha, and I'm checkmating you on h8. Except for he just does this. You don't have the bishop because I don't have a, yeah <laughs> I don't have the yeah pieces anymore. Um, so he does this, and so we just take on g5, and now it's just it's just a mop up. You know, it's even funny here. Your instinct might be, I'll just take back that knight because I'm aren't I down a bunch of material, and we just ignore it because the king is worth more. And yeah, he at this point there's no stopping checkmate uh, anymore, so he. <laughs> Takes he takes this and I, I sent him a message in the chat. I go, does this work? <laughs> and, he, and he says no. <laughs> but 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 he did uh, he did actually play on it. At first I was like, all right, he's either completely crazy or he's a genius because now I saw Bishop C five check. I'm like, hold on a minute, is am I am I about to get checkmated like King on the H1? F file? <laughs> like like you know if I go yeah King H one would be a huge blunder. Knight F two, uh, and with this I was like. Oh my God! It's like Rook F two gonna happen, and like the other Rook comes over, and I'm I'm the one getting mated. Um, it turns out no, because well, I'm I'm the one threatening checkmate in one move. So he defends it. And now we just we just mop up everything. It's pretty easy at this point. Um, so I thought that was a pretty fun game. Uh, I decided just to try and sacrifice everything. Apparently, put my pieces on stupid looking squares just so I could give this lecture. <laughs> uh, so I have like 10 to 15 minutes I want to show you the other one that uh, if you follow chess.com on Twitter they actually shared this game on their official Twitter uh, because the, the ending is beautiful and uh, which is cool, actually it's right here so beautiful win and checkmate by black by me uh, which actually had the funniest comment ever Worst Sicilian played by white I've ever seen. Uh, and I don't disagree. So I, I don't have a ton of time to go through all of the game in detail, but but there I'll try to highlight some of the key points. So if you've ever played a game of chess against me and you play e4, you have always faced this opening. Uh, I've played the Taimana of Sicilian for years. It's uh, It looks... It, it's kind of positional, but also kind of... Uh, very sharp when it needs to be. And this is one of the examples where it gets extremely dangerous for white. So this is a pretty normal position. Uh, you know, black normally is going to expand on the queen side, put the bishop on b7. I'm going to try and put some pressure on the c file and just play rather positionally. Uh, and if white, uh, which this game is a great example of a guy who does not know how to play this, if they don't know what they're doing, they're going to end up in a lot of trouble very quickly. You cannot play passive moves against this system. Uh, there's actually a game I played here. I gave a lecture on a while ago. I played uh, a 2350 player here, Yi Yang. And he played passive just like this person did, and he also just got obliterated. So he plays this move A3, which looks like, ah, I'm preventing the bishop coming from B4. Like, that can't be a bad thing. But white can't afford to just be losing time here because black. every move that black makes is actually going to matter, and every move that he makes right now is going to be horrible. Uh, H3, he's, he's not trying to do anything. He should be trying to play F4 and trying to achieve E5, um, but, he, but he hasn't apparently just doesn't know how to play this system. So we're developing pieces. He puts this rook on C1, which, I, I mean... This actually is what would prompt me to say this is the worst Sicilian from white ever, because there's no point to this move. So I go knight a5. Uh, obviously, the, a knight in the rim is, uh, is dim, except for when it's not. <laughs> um, and, and here, it's actually it's not a bad move, because it's going to come to this nice square in c4. He can't stop it from happening, because then the knight on c3 hangs. So he plays another brilliant move. So, so look at White's last two moves, rook c1, rook b1, with the idea that when I play knight c3, c4, that he can play bishop c1. He's, he's trying to set up, you know, a chess 960 position or something. So, you know, I just start playing moves that 
make sense. We're developing pieces, getting ready for what's, what's about to come. And so again, he just tries to play another passive move. He wants to play the move b3, but uh, wanted to make sure the knight on c3 was, def was defended apparently. There was also tricks with like knight takes a3, but who wants to do, who wants to do that? So I, I think my comment here was white was tired of having his pieces on active squares. So, so he decided to put, put it on a passive one. I hope this guy doesn't re watch this video because he's going to be very upset. Um, you know, so I expand uh, on the queen side. But this looks like it allows uh, uh, white the ability to kick my knight around. And I kind of want to do this on purpose. And this is the type of, of thing that happens in these Sicilians where white... If they're not perfectly uh, poised and like active enough, if you overstretch with your pawns, you're gonna get killed. And Alan, you've seen this game before, so you can't say anything. Who this? this is that one I showed you. That was the, the on the chess.com one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So he kicks my knight, and I just put it on e5, saying, "Okay, let's go." And he kicks it with f4, and this looks like it could be dangerous in some cases, right? I mean, he's gonna start trying to play g4 maybe, e5, f5, and just, just come in for me. But don't look on the right-hand side of the screen, because it get this is going to get really fun. <laughs> OK. So we're just going to check, because monkey sees check, monkey does check. right? So he moves. So where should I put that knight? If you didn't see the answer on the right-hand side of the screen when I told you not to look. Any ideas? Where should my knight go? It's attacked. He's got like, what? Two options that are safe? Somebody call one out. G5. Well, G4, yes. Here we go. And if you've played any type of Sicilian position or any position like this before, you'll, you'll know that actually the dark squares, so look at, look at this, look at all these dark squares here. Whoop, that's a light square. They're like Swiss cheese they're actually worth more than a piece in this position. And right now, it comes with a concrete threat of knight f2 winning the queen. And there's no piece that he can put on that square to, to stop it. So, well, free knight, right? So we're kind of coming in here. So how does he not lose his queen? So, all right, if rook f1, hello, neighbor. And that's mate. So that doesn't work. So how does he not lose his queen? So he's got to move up, right? Like queen d2, I think, is what he played? On knight d4, then, I, then I'll go knight f2 check and win his queen. So the king can't move because my queen will, will capture it. Yeah, that's no bueno. Huh? Queen d4? Hmm. Then, then I go queen. All right. So queen d4. Oh yeah. Then you're over check. Then I come check here, and then I can play d5. Yeah. And and actually, the trick from the last game, I'm gonna get it first. So I'll end up winning his queen. So, uh, so yeah, he plays queen d2, right? And so we've got it. So I check because again, monkey sees check. Monkey does check. <laughs> Um, so here, I mean, if I go to queen h2, check king f1, I'm not mating him. So there's no point of doing it immediately. So how do we bring more pieces to the attack? How should black really turn the screws on, on white? D5. So d, d5 is an option, yeah, because then I could maybe get bishop, bishop c5 check as an idea. Oh, so, so if you come in, and, you have to come into h2 check, uh, and then he can move. Um, so as we've seen, at least in the, in the first game that I did here, that I like to play funny-looking moves that also do a lot of really good things. Anybody see a funny-looking move? A move that you probably never play in any of your games. What do you got? You're raising your hand. What do you think? It's a very, very, very good. No, what is it? Okay. How about bishop d8? Who thought of bishop d8? Why would I even do that? Why would I even do that? Because I actually want to come, I want to actually put my bishop here and do checks, right? But I was defending, whoops, it was defending this pawn. So he goes, hey, 
That looks like a free pawn. And then what do we do? Because now he's, well, he's defending it now. But he took away the pawn that was blocking my check to begin with. Ha! <laughs> we come back. So, ah, what happens if he takes that bishop? Then you check. Yeah, so that's actually a, so if he takes here, then what do we do? Go check. And then what? If king f1, that's checkmate. Uh, so he'd have, to, he'd have to give everything, because if he put something in the way, I'd just put a rook there, and he has to give his queen and everything else. So he can't take the bishop. That's a, an important, uh, important little head fake here. So he comes back with queen d3. We do check, because monkey sees check, monkey does check. And he blocks. OK. So what do we do now? Because now it looks like he's getting his pieces out. This is a little bit harder to attack. Well, monkey sees check, monkey does check. Okay, so I, so I do this. And for sake of time, uh, what piece is better? My bishop on c5 or the knight on d4? Well, the knight is not doing anything other than being a roadblock, and my bishop is a monster cutting through all of his bad dark squares. And if that knight moves somewhere not here... Who would play this move? Bobby Fischer? Yeah, maybe. Bobby Fischer? <laughs> or Bobby King. <laughs> um, he can't take it back. What happens if he goes queen d4? I just take on g3, because, you know, why not? But. Oh, now the knight is double. double. There's a really funny little pattern here where he's going to lose his queen. So let's just say he plays bishop d2 because I'm attacking the knight on c3. But now we go, uh, ah, I throw in e5 just for, for kicks. Um, and so now wherever his queen moves, he loses it. So let's say queen g1, then we come, well, that's going to be checkmate. So if he comes to d3, then that's checkmate. If he goes to b6, then this is not even worth looking at. He loses every piece. So uh, we go e5. So I just got to go quickly through this. Sorry. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't take it. Instead, he played knight e2, which turns out to be a smart move. So in this position, I play e5. I'm, I'm trying to maybe someday liberate this bishop. I'm going to chase the king out, and I'll deliver checkmate on g4. He takes back, um, and I played bishop b6, uh, just because it was being threatened. It turns out, I'm going to just show you this crazy, crazy, crazy move. And Alan Song found this move after a few minutes. Who would play this move? Oh. Somebody please explain to me why rook c3 works. Well, if he takes with the queen, obviously he loses it. If he takes with the knight, we've got the... Yeah, there's 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 a mate coming on G1, uh, and otherwise he just loses the queen. There's no way I would see this move. No human sees this move. Alan Song's a machine. <laughs> so he gets a free piece here. I actually was horrified. I thought I messed up because now my knight is hanging. So you have to play the move H5, um, and so now I'll I'll show you the reason that this game ended up on the Chess.com Twitter page. So, black to move. Queen g1. Game over. Why is this game over? Knight takes queen. No. Knight takes queen. Rook. Rook. That. Knight h2 mate. Uh, yeah, it, we I, we also had rook f2 mate if we were if we were. I don't know. I, I like checkmating with knights. Uh, I don't get to do that often. So so this I thought that was a pretty fun uh, game. It was definitely worthy of worst Sicilian played by white ever. Um, but if you guys actually wanted to see this game, you could just search. On, just go to chess.com, Twitter, Rob King, and you'll, you'll find this game. So I thought that one was pretty fun. So uh, I think I'm out of time. So I'm, I'm glad I actually got permission from the wife to come back and 
and do this uh, do this one more time, and hopefully I get to see you guys again soon. You gonna get to play? Uh, no, no. <laughs>